Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, some at a, an additional lab to look at some some basic principles around uh, GCD prime numbers and so on. So the first one that we're going to have a look at is all prime numbers are of this form, uh, and what we'll do is we'll write a little Python program to be able to do that for the numbers up to one hundred. Okay, so so you can just uh, modify the pr this program, but we'll just go on to here, and uh, we'll just create our Python directory, and uh, we'll just start, and I've already prepped a little program here. Okay, so here's my little program. <coughs> Basically, we can we check up to the square root of the of the value. If it's divisible by two and three, then we ignore it, and then we check up to the square root value. And each time we take six times k plus one and six times k minus one, that should give us all of the prime numbers in there. And if it's uh, divisible. Uh, by the uh, by one of those values, then then we return false, else we return if it's true. Okay, so I've went from two to one hundred. I'm not printing out two and three, so it should start at five. Okay, so we'll just uh, fire that one up, see what we get. Okay, so there we go. So we should find that's pretty much all the prime numbers there. There's obviously a, a few little rogues in there that we could filter out. It's 35 is in there and 25 and so on. But all the prime numbers should be there from from uh, up to up to 100. Okay, so that's the that's the first part of this this tutorial. And uh, the next part is to generate up to a thousand. We can do that uh, quite easily. And with the next part, what we'll do is we'll we'll create what's called a prime number sieve. And it's a fast method for generating prime numbers. So we'll just find that one up. Chapter two. Just paste it in. <coughs> so prime numbers, as we'll see, is a really important method to generate our numbers f uh, because we we typically do it with inside RSA and and public key methods. Okay, so we'll just copy and paste this here. So unfortunately, we've lost the indents. Okay, so uh, that's our function there. And there's our code. Bank, that was. 
Okay, so there's that. There's a program. So this is a really fast way to actually generate the prime numbers, and this should give us up to one thousand. Hopefully, uh, what I'll do is I'll make it smaller so it doesn't take so long to run. So I'll do it up to a hundred. There we go. Okay, two, three, five, seven. That looks much better. So I'll give it a try up to a thousand <coughs> from there. And there we go. Okay, so that should give you uh, all your the prime numbers that you actually need to up to a thousand. Okay, so that's the other values then. So the next thing we're going to do is to look at uh, the GCD. And uh, we'll just fire up the link. GCD. So it's fairly simple. It's just a very simple little program to calculate the GCD. <coughs> Let me just paste that in. So there you go, 54 and 8. So 4, 1, 0, 5 and 10. 4, 1, 0, 5. One zero five and ten. It's five, of course it is. <coughs> okay, so what we'll find uh, later on in the module is that uh, the GCD of two values is equal to one is very important. Okay, so put these values in and see how we get on to see if we can have something that doesn't have a common factor between them. So what we use in cryptography quite often is the very simple operation of a value to the power of something else, then mod of a, of a prime number. Okay, so this is a very common form. Uh, we take our message and we take our exponent, raise it to the power of it, and then take the mod of a prime number. So what we'll do is we'll calculate uh, 8 to the power of 13, mod 271. We're obviously using very high... Uh, very large numbers uh, to be able to do this. So what we'll do is we'll just give it a try. And Okay, here is our code here. So we we'll just let's uh, copy that. I just paste it in. <coughs> okay, so we're going to enter a value, enter the exponent, enter the prime number, and hopefully it should do it all for us. So the value we're looking at is 5, 5, 5, and 53. Five, five, and fifty-three for our prime, and the value is fifty-one, which is correct. Then, okay, you can try it on a calculator if if you want. Uh, so five to the power of five, and then we have mod fifty-three. 
let's give that a try. So 5 to the power of 5 and then we see mod 53 is 51. Okay, so that checks perfectly with the value that we have here. So the next thing we're going to have a look at is a, a random number. So with a random number, pseudo random number, we end up with a, a seed value, which gives us our starting point. So we've got to watch when we generate our random number that the seed actually changes or we'll end up with the same values when we look at our, our generation of our keys. Sometimes in things like simulation we want to make sure the, the seed is the same each time. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at this web page. Here. And then we'll just grab the code. Okay, this is called a linear, uh, an LCRNG, and uh, here is our code, hopefully. there. Let's copy that. Paste it in and this time it's brought in the spacing, the tab spacing. So 2135 2135, 31 and 100 are the values that we're going to use and that's correct. And then we just run this just to see if it's running okay. <coughs> and that's generated a number of prime numbers. So we'll just have a look to see what the code actually is from them. Uh, so it's going to uh, generate 200 random numbers uh, for us. And uh, that's one way that we can generate a random number. But what we'll find is it's actually quite difficult to generate real pseudo-random numbers, so you've really got to watch uh, when you set up your programs.